do is talk to you a little bit about uh, asymptotes and pretty much what an asymptote is. If you look at the graph one over x, and if we were to plug in, let's like call this a function. If we were going to plug in values into x, um, we would see certain things are going to happen. As we plug in certain values, um, what we notice is my x values get larger. This graph is going to keep on getting closer and closer to zero. You can see if we did like f of you know two, we'd be left with one half. And if we did f of a hundred, we'd be left with one over a hundred. And as we keep on adding numbers, this graph is going to keep on getting smaller and smaller and smaller as your value. I mean, your values are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So what an asymptote is, is it's a line, it's a point, it's a value that your graph is going to keep on approaching without bound. Meaning that it's going to keep on approaching it, but it's never going to reach it, nor is it ever going to pass it. Um, so here, if we say, well, what is, the, what is this asymptote that we're going towards? Well, what is this number going to keep on reaching towards? What is it getting closer and closer and closer to? And we can say that the value that as I keep on putting larger and larger and larger numbers in is going to get to zero. All right? And even if I was going to look at the negative values, if I put in a negative 2 and a negative 100, again, it's going to keep on getting to zero. So you can see this graph, it approaches and we put a dotted line to represent an asymptote. And this is what we call a horizontal asymptote, all right, where we can say that y equals zero as your horizontal asymptote. Then the next thing is I say, well, is this graph approaching any other line? And you can say, yeah, the line is approaching. Um, the line is again approaching uh, zero. And you know, what kind of happens? What's, uh, you know, what's happening as my lines, uh, as they're going to the left? Well, as you can see, this again starts getting closer and closer to zero, but we don't see our graph approaching it. And if I was just going to kind of look at some numbers here, let's say if I looked at f of 1. Well, that would be 1 over 1, which equals 1. And let's say I looked at f of, you know, 1 half, which would be 1 over 1 half. And then when you do your calculations, that equals 2. So f of... 100 or 1 over 100 is going to equal 100. So again, we keep on getting higher and higher and higher up here, but what you notice is we can't get to zero, can we? Can we can't put a zero in there because anything number divided by zero is going to be undefined. So what happens is this line just keeps on getting larger and larger and larger as we keep on getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So the vertical asymptote for this problem is going to be x is equal to 0. All right? So now this is a pretty elementary problem. This is pretty basic, you know? How are we going to distinguish when we can find out our, uh, when to find the horizontal and the vertical asymptote? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. First thing, can I erase this? Okay. First thing, let's talk about vertical asymptote. Alright, my vertical asymptote, remember, is going to be a, a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a vertical line that my graph cannot cross. Right? So I can have any kind of graph, but it can't, cr it's not going to cross a line. What it's actually going to do is actually going to approach these lines. Alright? Um, so when does this happen? Well, we, I just showed you one example where it approaches zero. But let's say I wanted to figure out another function. And you know, remember when we're talking about functions, that means you have an input value, you have an output value. Well, if it can't approach a line, that means whatever that value is, let's say x equals negative two, x is negative two is not going to be a part of my function, right? Because if it never if my domain is not including negative two, then the line where x equals negative two is not a part of my domain. So when do we have things that are not a part of our domain? Well, one way is when we've talked about rational expressions, we know that when the bottom of your function is equal to zero, that's not a part of your domain. And we'll get into other ones like logarithms uh, and you know roots and all that kind of stuff. But right now, let's just focus on our rash. Let's just focus on rational uh, functions. If I have f of x, 
all right? And if I have two polynomials, all right? Let's say I have a polynomial x squared plus one and x squared, you know, minus four, all right? Well, to find my two asymptotes here, and I've kind of chose this problem in, in general, in particular, remember, to find my domain, what values don't, aren't a part of my domain, we set the bottom equal to zero. And that's exactly what we want to do for finding the asymptotes. We want to find what values are not in my domain. What values do my graphs approach? What values do my graphs approach but never actually touch? And so when I add 4 over here, I get 4 equals x squared. I take the square root. And I get plus or minus 2 is equal to x. Therefore, when you're setting the bottom, which we call our vertical, all right, so I already said vertical asymptotes are what you're going to set the bottom of your function equal to 0, and then you solve. And what those two values are, x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So those are my two, um, those are my two horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical asymptotes. My graph is going to approach these two lines, but it's never going to cross actually those two lines. All right. So that's how you find your vertical asymptotes. Um, to set it equal to zero, you might have to do factoring. You might have to solve, just like I did. And, you know, take the square root. Um, you might have to uh, even do the quadratic formula. You know. Um, but you need to make sure that you find the values of x that make it zero. And if there are no values of x, or if you have complex, like let's say you have a negative root or you find a complex number, then there's no vertical asymptotes. Okay? Good. Let's look, move on to horizontal. All right. Now, horizontal is a little bit more difficult. Well, maybe. Um, it's a little more complex without the imaginary number. Uh, and, but it's, I think it's a lot more easier to understand. So on, a complex, on horizontal, for rational functions, we got to look at three things. First of all, we're going to have two polynomials. We're going to have a polynomial on top. All right? And we're going to have a polynomial on the bottom. And this would be like, you know, we... Um, Dot, 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 dot. And then we can k like a, I don't know, we'll call this b. All right, and what I'm explaining, guys, I don't want to go through the whole polynomial, uh, the correct definition of a polynomial, because it confuses so many students. But all I'm really saying, guys, if you have like f of x equals, you know, x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 5 all over x squared plus 2x plus 1. All I'm saying is, when we have polynomials, we write them with our highest degree first, right? And what we have, whatever number's in front of there, that's your leading coefficient. This one, your leading coefficient is 1, or what in this example we're going to call a. And here, my leading coefficient is 3, or in this example, would be b. So all my a, ax to the m and you know bn, I don't, even, I don't even want to explain that right now to you. For my first value, b, x to the n, it's just that first term of a polynomial. What we call our leading term, right? When it's in descending order, that's your leading term. So there's something very important that happens with this. All right? When I have m is less than n, when I have m is equal to n, and when I have uh, m is greater than n, all right? Here, when your exponent up top is smaller than your exponent on the bottom, your horizontal asymptote is going to equal, uh, y is going to equal 0. That means your horizontal asymptote is going to be the x-axis. When it's equal to each other, you're going to have y equals a over b. So you're going to take your two coefficients of your leading term, divide them, and that will be your horizontal asymptote. And then over here, when it's greater, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay? And there's something else we're going to learn from there a little bit later. But for right now, there's no horizontal asymptote. Um, so I'll just write an example just so you guys can see. 
let's say this is uh, 4 over x squared. Here, my x could be x to the 0. So since 0 is less than 2, my uh, horizontal asymptote would be y to the 0. Here, I could do f of x equals 3x to the 4th minus x squared over 2x to the 4th plus 3x cubed minus 1. Since they're equal, my h is equal, sorry, h is equal, oh, geez, h. y is equal to 0. Here, my y would be equal to 3 halves. You take your two coefficients and divide them. Here, if I said f of x equals x cubed over x minus 1, here there's no horizontal asymptote. All right? So that's how you find horizontal and, or that's an overview of asymptotes. Wow, I talked really fast.